This is One on One. Brought to you by the New Jersey Education Association. God gave you that gift, and you're working it every day. This is uh, Way McDonald. He just says performer here, but she's <laughs> so much more than that. She was a finalist season 11 on NBC's The Voice. Um, you are extraordinary. Thank you. How much do you love singing? Uh, it's, it's more important to me than breathing sometimes. Yeah. Your speaking voice, your singing voice, not the same? Yeah. I don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I always say my answer is either God or the, the people that I grew up around because I grew up around a lot of music. And, you know, you grow up listening to Nina Simone, Etta James, Ella Fitzgerald. You don't oh. hear any high-pitched no, you do not. Um, voices. I mean, with the exception of Ella, but Ella was a breath of fresh air. So she, you know, it was different for me. I Why were you old school like that? Why were you old school in terms of who you listened to? Because you have to understand you know, who came before you before you try to master anything else. I feel like that's important. Just like if you're going to dance hip hop, you have to learn how to dance ballet. You started singing how old? God, I was 12. That's late in the eyes of some. What were you doing before that? Um, acting and dancing, which is kind of crazy because now my biggest thing that I'm known for is singing. And I'm like, I started kind of late. <laughs> but but does ever, do people know that you can do a lot of other things? Um, not as often if they don't ask, um, they don't necessarily know until they find out when I perform. Mm. Um, but I love acting and dancing just as much as I love singing and writing music. So the term quote unquote performer, which is all your intro said, yeah. why do you go with that? Because if you simply say singer, that's limiting yourself. If you simply say actor, that's limiting yourself. You know, people automatically put you in a box. If you perform, you entertain people. If you perform, you can be an artist. You can be anything that you want to be. So if I say I'm a performer, I'm here to help entertain you and put on a show. Right before we got in here, you and I were talking about um, people who have a hard time with rejection, mm -hmm. and, but they want to they wanna excel. And it's not just about your industry. It's about mine. It's about sports. It's about Absolutely. anything. They can't handle rejection. They don't want to deal with rejection, you say? I say don't get in the game. Cause, Cause? Cause you have to be sure enough in yourself if you're going to be in such a tough business in any part of life. I feel like, you know, you're worth it. So if anybody's telling you otherwise, then mm. they don't have the right to be around you and you need to get rid of those people ASAP. So when you were performing on The Voice, yeah. right? Season 11. Yes. Um, one of my all-time favorites, yours as well as others, Alicia Keys was one of the ones who said, hey, this young lady has something. What, what was the moment like when Alicia Keys connected with you? It was very surreal. I kind of blanked out. <laughs> it was... <laughs> what were you saying? Do you remember what you're... You don't remember what you're saying? Oh, God. That entire moment is my blind audition. All I remember is walking up on stage... And then walking off stage, I don't remember anything in between other than the fact that she cut everybody off and was like, you came to this show to meet me. And that was one of the biggest moments of my life because I was like, that's crazy. And what happened after that? Um, she Your talked life. to me and she said, like, she said, I have you. And I definitely believe her. And now I have a great fan base and I'm making music and I'm making a whole bunch of moves and performing everywhere. And yeah, I have a book coming out, which is phenomenal for like kids and high school kids. So, yeah. What's the message? The message is, you know, you can be who you are and no matter where you start, you can always end up on top as long as you believe in yourself and you keep fighting. Were you bullied as a kid? Absolutely. Describe it. Uh, horrible. Um, from sixth to eighth grade, sixth and seventh grade was always the worst because it was not just, you know, 
of course physical, but it's emotional and it's spiritual. It's it gets bad. Um, by the time eighth grade, I was just ostracized completely. Like it's. You were not. Hold on, ostracized. Describe that. You, I, you didn't have a group. You had nothing. No, I had nothing. I didn't have anybody. I I went to a Christian school, and I always say my closest friend was Jesus. I didn't have anybody. Did you want other people to be with you? you I want did. Want to hang with other kids? Yeah, of, of course. I mean, like, you know, I was 12 years old. You know, I wanted I wanted to be able to fit in. And people would see me eating lunch alone, and they'd be like, well, just join a group. And I would say, it's not that simple. I don't want right. to join a group. Why can't somebody accept me? Why do I have to accept what everybody else does? So to all the kids right now watching, way who are struggling, who are lost, who mm -hmm. feel ostracized, your word, tell them something right now. You're enough. You're more than enough. And regardless of what anybody says about you, who you are, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're strong. And the only reason that bullies bully you is because they're insecure about themselves. And you should not take that in a way that kind of demeans who you are. Where are you going after this? <sighs> to the stars. Describe what the stars look like. You're playing at the Apollo again, no? Yes. And the, the, the Apollo, the, the, you actually touch the rock when you go on? Yes. You do it. Yeah, For the, good luck, the, you gotta do it. Yeah, you gotta, so <laughs> this thing, you gotta walk on, you gotta touch the tree stuff. And it's, it's so glossy too. It's ridiculously glossy. You've never, you've never gone on and not done it. You know? That's <laughs> no. true. No, it was four times I went on that show and I had to do it every time, every time. What do the stars look like for you? Where are you going? Got a minute left, go. Okay. The stars is me changing the world, me making sure that I affect everybody that I can be around in the best way possible, that regardless of what happens, that I can take away any pain and I can show people who they really are and I want to make beautiful music and dancing and acting and all of that and more. In the middle of that, you're, still, you're at William Patterson University right now. You, yes. you get your academics, you get your whole life ahead of you and you have accomplished so much, but what's even more interesting about you is not just your ability to accomplish, accomplish much more, but your ability to impact other people because it seems to me that being a performer isn't really important to you but having a positive impact on others is even more important, and that's what makes you a pretty special young lady. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's been amazing. Thank you, thank you. You say that to everyone who interviews you? I just want to make sure. No. I'm just checking. I'm just fishing for a compliment. Oh, well, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so you can act as well. <laughs> thank you, Way. Thank you. This is uh, Way McDonald. She's awesome. Uh, we'll be right back right after this. Stay with us. My husband and I spent more than 30 years in the public schools. We're retired, but we like to stay involved. Do you think he's going to learn to fly? We're just as busy now as in our teaching days. The same goes for a lot of the retired educators we know. Let me see you all flap your wings like your penguins learning to fly. Teaching is all about building relationships, and that never goes away. Because once a teacher, always a teacher. We're Ed and Miriam, and we are proud to be New Jersey educators. Also brought to you by Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, and by the Northward Center.